Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And let's look at the uh, impeachment of the Zamfara State Deputy Governor, Mandy Gosau, who was impeached yesterday. Uh, we do have a guest joining the conversation this morning uh, for the want of time, a Bonu Adeguruwa, uh, who is uh, our guest this morning on the show. He's a legal practitioner. It's good to have you join us, all things being equal. We we'll also have retired Colonel Bala Mandi, also of the People's Democratic Party, and uh, the party chairman of Zamfara State joining the conversation. Uh, but it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. All right. How would you describe the process? I mean, this has been described as a lot of um, illegality in the democratic system. Uh, some people say this is totally unconstitutional, the impeachment of the deputy governor of Zamfara State. But in your words, uh, how would you describe this? I believe that the drama currently playing out in the chambers of the House of Assembly of Zamfara State uh, amounts to a desecration of our value system, our democratic ethos, and what we have held sacrosanct in the implementation of democracy in our country, which is respect for the rule of law, respect for the judiciary, and of course, adherence to due process. If you recall the events leading to these, is that the current governor was in the People's Democratic Party and he lost the election woefully to the All Progressive Congress. But in the course of time, because of internal wranglings, there was a court case that went up to the Supreme Court, which sacked the entire leadership of the All Progressive Congress, and there was a vacuum. And that was how PDP took over Zamfara State. So this government ordinarily is a product of judicial proclamation. And so it becomes totally surprising that that same government is desecrating the ladder through which it climbed onto power. There is a case pending in the Federal High Court before Honorable Justice Ian Ekwo, filed by the Deputy Governor against his impeachment. And the House of Assembly has been served. The Chief Judge of the state has been served. What is required is for parties to await the final determination of that case as a mark of respect for the authority of the court. So for the House of Assembly to proceed with setting up a panel, with allegations to the chief judge, with reports of the panel, and then pronouncing the impeachment of the deputy governor and swearing another person why the case is still pending, uh, says a lot about how our leaders respect due process. And that's why I think it's important for all of us to uh, make a case for Zamfara State to abide by the rule of law and due process. Okay. I believe at the appropriate time, the, the judge before whom that case is pending should be able to give sanctions against what is currently playing out in Zamfara State by reversing all that has been done while the case was pending in court. And I think that is what is expected uh, by most Nigerians in respect of what is going on in Zamfara State. Okay, interestingly, and uh, you said that um, uh, I noticed you didn't use the word stay of execution. Um, you said out of respect for the court. That, that may imply that the, the uh, Zamfara State House of Assembly and then, of course, the panel and the government of the state did not flout any law in embarking on this action. Is that what you mean? But that uh, maybe they should have just out of, out of respect morally or morality done that. But uh, I'm sure you're saying they didn't break any law. Is that what you mean? No, not at all. They have broken the law. What, what, uh, what law have, have they broken, sir? Yes, that's what I want to explain. We have now accepted in our system in Nigeria 
starting from the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of governor of Lagos State against Ojuku, that once parties have submitted their disputes before the court, even when no order has been made specifically, the case ties the hands of the parties from taking any steps that may overreach whatever decision that may be taken by the court in respect of the case itself. So it is against our law for Zamfara State House of Assembly, for the chief judge of Zamfara State, who are parties to a case pending before the Federal High Court in Abuja, to proceed to conclude the process of impeachment when the person who filed the case is challenging that same process. So it is stamping on the authority of the court. It is breaking the hallowed integrity of our judicial process for Zamfara state government and all its agencies to pretend as if the case does not exist. Because what it means now is that a fait accompli has been forced on the court that whatever decision it may reach eventually will probably become a nullity in the sense that the person has been impeached and another person has been sworn in. And if we continue like that, we are entrenching a reign of impunity in our country, which is contrary to democracy. So they have broken the law. All right. But is, is there no law? Because you are talking about precedent now, sir, um, and of course a ruling in the case you cited. But is there no law specifically giving the process and the processes for uh, um, a, a judge to other parties to stay action in his further action? Um, and is, 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 if that is there, is that not the law that, that should be looked at in this case? Uh, the authority of the court is not restricted by any law. Section 6 of the Constitution creates judicial powers and gives every judge, every court created by the Constitution, including the Federal High Court where this case is pending, inherent powers to stay actions, inherent powers to be able to decide disputes between persons and government and between governments and governments. So the law that has been broken by Zamfara State, House of Assembly, and the Chief Judge in this case is Section 6 of the Constitution and the relevant precedents by which all lawyers and judges have accepted to honor and obey the authority of the court once a case is already pending in any court in respect of any dispute. Uh, the reason I'm asking is because, you know, in the jury, in jurisprudence, lawyers have been known in several cases, several cases in this country to apply, to make an application for, for a stay. And then upon that application, a judge may grant the stay. And I've seen cases where if that application was not made, the parties were free to do what they wanted to do, and it's been accepted as well, in recent cases as well. So that can also be relied on, wouldn't you say? Well, for me, it was possible for the judge or the federal court to have made a direct order restraining the House of Assembly from proceeding with the impeachment process. That impeachment process could not be completed without the chief judge of that state setting up a panel to investigate the allegations against the deputy governor. And that's the point that I'm making, that for the chief judge of a state who is aware that the case is pending in court at the federal high court, it does not require any specific order for the chief judge to honor his fellow judge by ensuring that he does not take any step that may overreach the case pending in court. But I agree with you that it was up to the court in Abuja to have made an express order, staying proceedings of the House of Assembly or even restraining uh, the House of Assembly from proceeding with the impeachment process. But I don't think that order was made in this particular case. All right, let's also bring in retired Colonel Bala Mandi. He's of the People's Democratic Party. As a matter of fact, he's also the party chairman of Zamfara State. Uh, good morning, retired Colonel Bala Mandi. Good morning. All right, uh, so quickly, a lot of people have said that the deputy governor was impeached on the grounds that he refused, uh, you know, to uh, join the All Progressive Congress. Can you quickly bring us to speed with what actually led to this incident of his impeachment? Yeah, 
actually, um, this impeachment move started after the governor had moved to APC. If the governor had remained in PDP, there would have been no impeachment saga at all. But when he moved, the deputy governor, myself, and others decided to remain in PDP. And um, uh, the House of Assembly initially made a move to impeach the governor, I mean the deputy governor. And the deputy governor went to the court, and the court has an injunction for all parties to maintain status quo and fidelity until the hearing and determination of the case before the court. That was last year and until July. And this case has been on. Just about two weeks we were in the court and our lawyer, Emmanuel Okala, requested the High Court judge to make a definite uh, pronouncement or rather to direct to direct um, Jose Kome to give an undertaking that there will be no further proceeding on the impeachment issue until the court has determined the case before it. When Mike Ozokome declined, the, the judge of the High Court said the case is before the court and he does not expect any party to do anything that will amount to contempt of court. That this case has not been determined. So he's not expecting anybody to revisit the case until the court determines it. That was the position that day, just about two weeks ago. But for us now to hear the chief judge of the state has set up a seven month panel. When the chief judge is actually a party to the case, um, as a layman, I thought that should not be the case. But the chief judge went ahead, knowing the chief judge was a party to the case and set up a seven-month committee. I think that is um, uh, uh, this, this regard to the, the, the orders of the High Court. I'm sorry to, to, uh, to just to go back on this, uh, uh, Colonel Balamande. Uh, it seems that, is this, are you referring to the Federal High Court um, restraining order from last year, J uh, July 2021? Yes. Okay, because we, we, we are aware that um, a fresh uh, um, process was, um, um, a new impeachment notice was served about um, two weeks ago. And uh, on the 15th of February, um, uh, an attempt was made by the lawyers uh, on behalf of Mr. Gusso and the PDP to, to, make, to ensure that this restraining order was issued on this new impeachment notice. And we know that... Um, uh, Justice in Yanko, uh, Milord the Honourable Justice Yanko, turned down the request of the lawyers from Mr. Gusso and his party to restrain the House of National, the House of Assembly, and the Chief Judge from, from going ahead. So, so I mean, are, are you not uh, maybe you know confused about the two? No, there is no confusion. It was about the originating someone that was submitted, and. Um, my Ozokume objected to it that the, the, the notice was just after him, he needed time to study it. And the judge uh, gave him the time he requested for. So, what the judge advised was that he did not expect any responsible um, uh, uh, counsel to go ahead and do anything on a case that is before him. Hmm. 
But, okay. but yeah. No. But in, in, I mean, in, in the light of, are you, so are you saying that um, what happened earlier in, in February, in the last uh, time they were in court, was it that the judge refused to restrain the parties from embarking on, on impeachment proceedings, having set March 10 as a date for hearing? Or that he agreed? Because what, what the information I have was that he refused to restrain the parties from going ahead with any action. What, 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 the, judge, what the judge said was that the case was before him and he would not expect any party to the case to go ahead and conduct themselves in any way that is tantamount to uh, going um, uh, contrary to the court's um, advice. It was cautioning. Did he issue a restraining mm -hmm. order, uh, Connell? No, he didn't issue a restraining order specifically. Okay, I just want to be sure about that. That, 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 that he cautioned all the parties against doing anything on that matter before him. Okay, all right. I just So it was an advice of sort. All right, Connell, let's yes. say. Okay, at this point, let's also bring in uh, Ebon Ulua Degborua, who's still with us this morning. Now, uh, another issue is the fact that, you know, the governor swore in uh, the new deputy governor. And uh, the big question is here, uh, do the governor have the powers to swear in the deputy governor? From the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the responsibility to swear in the president, vice president, governor, and the deputy governor is vested in the chief judge of the state, where it is the governor or deputy, or the chief justice of Nigeria, where it is the president or the vice president. No other person is permitted in law to swear in these persons apart from the judge that is listed. Now, my concern with this case, actually, is the need for us to appeal to our leaders, politicians across the board, to instill tolerance and democratic values. Because we can't comp continue to claim to be practicing democracy when we cannot uh, uh, show any tolerance for democratic norms. You will recall, ma'am, that this same scenario played out in those states. When the deputy governor, Mr. Agbola, declared for the Zenith Labour Party, while he was still holding office as the deputy governor, and everybody in Nigeria put pressure on the governor, Akere Dolu, Rotima Akere Dolu, to allow the deputy governor be, and he remained in office while he had declared for another political party. And he went ahead and contested for the governorship election while he was still the chief uh, deputy governor. And the chief judge of the state refused to be intimidated into setting up any ramshackle panel to remove the deputy governor from those states just because he defected to another political party. That is how democracy should be. We cannot continue to run our affairs as if we do not have respect for due process and law. This is Zamvara state a state that is populated and taken over by bandits. It is impeachment that is the priority of leaders. Instead of restoring peace, instead of ensuring that there's progress, instead of working towards economic development, it is mundane matters of impeachment that has occupied the pride of governance in a state that is struggling to survive. I think that the Nigerians should put pressure on our leaders to be able to ensure that whatever it is that they gave us as oath of office. They should pursue it and respect our constitution. The high court should not have any problem when this, this case comes up on March 10. To set aside what has been done in Zamfara State, it's total, 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 un totally unacceptable. All of this, you say that all that has happened in Zamfara State is undemocratic, unconstitutional. Yes, I do say that, that for the House of Assembly of a state, and the chief judge of the state to proceed to impeach the deputy governor while the case is still pending before the federal high court is totally unconstitutional. Uh, 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 and the consequence yeah. of that action is for the judge to reverse what has been done okay. 
why the case is still pending. But uh, Adebo Raisi, and um, you've said that you've had the, the, the gentleman from the PDP, he's in Zamfara State, and uh, we have the information here that the, the judge didn't issue a restraining order. The first order was issued based on the first notice, but for this fresh notice, he declined to, to issue any order restraining the parties um, from um, embarking on any further action. Um, and you've said that, you know, they, they, they haven't broken any law, basically, by, by acting without a restraining order issued or a word by the court, the judge. And so how is this unconstitutional? I mean, you look at, you look at the, 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 the constitution and the sections of um, the constitution that, that talk about the processes for impeachment. You had um, uh, more than enough members of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, uh, which has 24 members, and, and they're required to have at least 18 of them voting in favor of the impeachment. And um, they had 20 members voting. So wherein lies the unconstitutionality? Um, wherein lies the illegality in all of this? Thank you very much. You heard, and I believe it is correct, when the PDP chairman said that the judge gave an advice, he gave a recommendation. Under section 318 of our constitution, the decisions of a court includes advice, recommendations. Even when the judge does not say anything, the fact that the matter is pending is enough to tie the hands of the House of Assembly of Zamfara State and that of the chief judge of that state. But the law that has been broken in this particular case order. There was is a, section 6. Yeah, he refused to issue an order. A, a, a move was made by the lawyers to Mr. Gusso and the PDP to, to, to get the judge to issue an order restraining the parties from acting. But he refused. He declined. No, he said that last year, July, which you confirmed, that the judge made an order for parties to maintain the status quo. It's immaterial that after that, they proceeded to issue a fresh notice. The substance of the case before the court is impeachment. And the process of that impeachment includes the notice that may have been issued even after the case was filed. So it's immaterial that no specific order was made. Once the judge says maintain the status quo anti bellum, Parties were expected to restrain themselves from further hostilities, including issuing fresh notices. All right, well, we have to let you go, gentlemen. We do appreciate your time this morning with us. Uh, for the want of time, uh, we will definitely continue this conversation and follow of the development of things in Zamfara State. Once again, retired Colonel Bala Mandi of uh, the People's Democratic Party and the state chairman of Zamfara State, we appreciate your time this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. And also thanks to um, Ebolu Adebora, SC, and a legal practitioner uh, for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's the size of the conversation. Uh, very boring issues. Of course, uh, our democracy uh, seems to be, or might just be at the verge of being, I mean, threatened or probably kicked out. But of course, there's been several calls that we need to preserve, you know, our democracy. We'll follow up the things like we rightly mentioned. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Many thanks for staying with us. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.